I just signed into law the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act, making lynching a federal hate crime for the first time in American history. I want to thank Vice President Harris, who was a key co-sponsor of this bill when she was a United States Senator. And I also want to thank Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer and members of the Congress here today, especially Congressman Hoyer, Bobby Rush, Senator Dick Durbin, and Cory Booker. I I also want to thank Senator Tim Scott, who couldn't be here today. And the civil rights leader gathered here today, and most of all, the family of Emmett Till and Ida B. Wells. Thank you for never giving up. Never, ever giving up. It's Matter of fact, Grandar told me that her mother was here when? And your grandmother was here when? In 1898. In 1898 in order to make a case for uh, the anti-lynching law. It was over 100 years ago, in 1900, a North Carolina representative named George Henry White, the son of a slave, the only black lawmaker in Congress at the time, who first introduced legislation to make lynching a federal crime. Hundreds, hundreds of similar bills have failed to pass. Over the years, Several federal hate crime laws were enacted, including one I signed last year to combat COVID-19 hate crimes. But no federal law, no federal law expressly prohibited lynching, none, until today. One of the leading chronicles of our history of the lynching is Brian Stevenson, who happens to be a Delawarean from my home state, who wanted very much to be here today, but he could not. He helped build a national memorial for peace and justice in Montgomery, Alabama, America's first site dedicated to understanding the legacy of lynching. You know, his extensive research showed that between 1877 and 1950, more than 4,400 black people were murdered by lynching, most in the South, but some in the North as well. That's a lot of folks, man, and a lot of silence for a long time. Lynching was pure terror to enforce the lie that not everyone, not everyone belongs in America, not everyone is created equal. Terror to systematically undermine hard-fought hard civil rights. Terror, not just in the dark of the night, but in broad daylight. Innocent men, women, and children hung by nooses from trees bodies burned and drowned and castrated. Their crimes? Trying to vote, trying to go to school, trying to own a business or preach the gospel. False accusations of murder, arson, and robbery. Simply being black. Often the crowds of white families gathered to celebrate the spectacle, taking pictures of the bodies and mailing them as postcards. Emmett Till was an only child. He grew up in the south side of Chicago with his mother, Mamie, and grandparents and cousins. In the summer of 1955, Emmett turned 14 years old, ready to start eighth grade in the fall. Before school started, he wanted to visit his cousins in Mississippi. So Emmett's mom dropped him off at the train station in Chicago. Her own family fled the Delta decades earlier. So she told him, she told him the unwritten rules she had to follow. Quote, be very purpose through your pain, to find purpose through your pain. But the law is not just about the past. It's about the present and our future as well. From the bullets in the back of Ahmaud Arbery to countless other acts of violence, countless victims, known and unknown. The same racial hatred that drove the mob to hang a noose brought that mob carrying torches out of the fields of Charlottesville just a few years ago. Racial hate isn't an old problem. It's a persistent problem, a persistent problem. And I know many of the civil rights leaders here know, you've heard me say it a hundred times, hate never goes away. It only hides. It hides under the rocks. 
given just a little bit of oxygen, it comes roaring back out, screaming. But what stops it is all of us, not a few, all of us have to stop it. People like Ida B. Wells, one of the founders of the NAACP established 100 years ago in response to racial terror across the country, a brilliant, gifted writer. She exposed the barbaric nature of, lyn of lynching as a tool to intimidate and subjugate black Americans. In her words, her courage, her convictions, she was trying to prevent the murders of Emmett Till and Ahmaud Arbery, so many others, over 4,400 others. Ida B. Ida B. Wells once said, quote, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon the wrongs. Turn the light of truth upon the wrongs. That's what all of you have done gathered in this Rose Garden with this bill and so much more, including Ida B. Wells' great-granddaughter, Michelle Duster, whom I'm honored to introduce to mark this historic day. Michelle, welcome to the White House and welcome to the podium. And as my mother would say, God love you, dear. Thank you.